find fill us that thing. Okay, welcome to day three of Google Apps class. And this week we are doing what, Theo? Since it's your last day at Casa Grande. Forms. Forms, exactly. So this is day three of forms. We're going to pick up with our form yesterday to bring it to another level. And so right now we're talking about sharing the form. And this kind of goes under the Google Apps work together. So we started with our form, which is in what? What, what app is it in? Right, it's in Drive. And we're going to have to get a longer cord here because this looks kind of funny. Like that. Okay, so it's on Drive. Where do we want it shared to? What did I just say? Google Plus. Google Plus, right. And that is not the same as Google Drive, right? Right. right. That's a different app. So how do we get it from here to here? Copy it. Okay. Open up a new tab in what? Called what? Exactly. So you go to Google Plus. Then what? Let's go to Google Plus. Okay, so I'm in Google Plus. Oops. So when I go to Google Plus, where do I start? Where do I start in Google Plus? This is the easy questions, people. Uh, Ernie, where do we start in Google Plus? Marty, where do we start in Google Plus? When we hit Google Plus, it goes to Google Plus. Where do we start? I would say the three bars. No. Home page, right? Okay. All questions are not trick questions. Sometimes a question is just a question. Okay, we start on the home page. So the simple questions that I ask is to help other people get up to speed. Okay, it's not always a trick question. The trick questions come on Friday. Um, okay, so we start on the home page. Now, how do we put our Google form on the home page. It's right here in front of us. Share what's new. I just posted. Okay? We post it. Now I know some people here were not here when we did Google Plus. Okay, so we do all apps, we do eight apps, and we do them twice. I go around the circle twice. So some people haven't done Google Plus in here. So this is kind of not so good. Some people, like Ernie, should have done it twice. Should have gone through the cycle twice. So it should be easy if I say, how do we put a form onto Google Plus? How do we do it, Ernie? Well, you could click on where it says share. Yeah. Then what? Yeah, exactly. I just detach a link. What's the link, Stephanie? The address for our form. Okay, it would be the the address for the form. Exactly correct. But it's the live form. Okay. View live form, not the edit form. Okay. What happens if you share the link to the edit form? This is going to be like one we filled out Everybody's going to screw it up. Yeah. Okay. That's what's going to happen, right, Phyllis? Yep. That has happened many times here. Too many. Okay. Uh, so we go to the here. So so what everybody should do right now is take your form that you did yesterday and share it with me. You should share it with the public and share it with me. So, I'm doing it. Oh, okay. So, you need to go into the box or the corner. How do you do it? Go back to your drive. Exactly. You go to your drive, you find your form. Go to your drive, go to your docs. 
go to go to um, click on new, go to that. Oh, oh. Find your form. Yeah. Okay, make sure it's shared. Okay, so I just got one new one. Cool. <laughs> Okay, yeah. from Stephanie. All right. Now, what do I do if I want to see the form? Open it. Right. Open it. How do I open it? Click on it. Okay. So here is Stephanie's form. Okay, so that's one. This should only take a couple of seconds for everybody to do it. Marty, what's the status of your form? Okay, this is, so you need to tell yourself, this is easy. Ernie, what's the status of your form? Did you share it? Okay, so I think you did something wrong. Go to your document and go to edit. And who is it shared with? Does it say share it publicly? Okay, here's Ernie, Ernie's form. Okay, so here's Marty. Google Plus. 
So let's look to see where he did it. I did see that I had a notification, but when I went to it, So, Ernie, what did you do different the second time? Oh, so it wasn't shared with me. Okay. All right. And let's see. So, Ernie's there. Dwayne. Okay. Dwayne and Phyllis Dentistry. Okay. Let's see. We have one other new one. Dave Sweetman. <clears throat> this looks like something a little bit different. Right, Dave? A little bit. Okay. So this is the uh, good. This is employment planning. All right. Good. Okay. So now that we have those shared, I think I have everybody right. Stephanie, you did it with with uh, Mike. Oh, with Theo. Mike, you did it too. You weren't here. You weren't here. Got Mike, Scott, Marty's, Dwayne, got Ernie's. Okay, good. So now let's focus on. Hmm. Let's focus on our assignment for today. And Lorita, who did you go with? Who did you go with? Gina. Okay, good. Okay, so we've got everybody. Now let's go to what we're going to do today. Okay. We're going to do another page, right? Okay, so we're going to go to another page. We're going to add some additional pages. So we're going to do this by taking yesterday's form and adding a, a few pages based upon the following questions. Okay, so what I want everybody to do is open up your form. Good morning, Jana. Open up your form in edit view mode. Okay, so I'm going to do that here. And I have this document now. Why do I not have edit view? Is this shared with me, Stephanie? Yeah. So I can edit it? It should be. Well, I know that it should be. Um, because you're in, in. I'm not asking if it should be. <laughs> oh. Okay, I need to be able to edit it. If I have, edit, if I have editing rights, then I can edit it. 
So let's see what everybody did yesterday. Okay, so I'm looking at Dwayne and Phyllis's form. Okay, so you see when I opened up, I'm now in edit mode, right? Yeah, I see you. Okay, so I can scroll down and look at the questions. I want to add a couple pages. How do I do that? Okay, so I go to the bottom. I go to the bottom, I don't click add item, I click on the arrow next to it. Because I need, now so everybody needs to do this. So go to the bottom of your form. And only one of you on your team do this. Trade off. So the first thing one of you do, the second thing the other person does, just go back and forth. Okay, so go to the bottom where it says add item, click on the down arrow and this box will pop up. Okay, now when the box pops up, Click over here where it says page break. Page break. Click on page break. Okay, and one of the questions is now title this new client. Okay, page title, new client. Then hit tab, go to the description box and say this. Please. And click on new page. And then we're going to add another new page. So how do we do that? We click on the down arrow. So now the other person on the team should be doing this one. So Michael, you should be doing it. Click the down arrow. And you're going to type. Page break. Okay, so for Dwayne and Phyllis, you don't do it because I'm doing it. Okay, all right. Okay, you watch what I'm doing. Okay, so now you type. Dental hygiene. Done. Okay, now Dwayne had added an untitled page, so I'm going to change the name of that to what? Orthodontics. Okay, so you should have three new pages. I'll put your current putting grant in your morning. Okay. Or or Stephanie, are you talk, are you keeping up Stephanie? Yes. Okay. So share your document with, with Mike. Okay. Okay. Dental hygiene. Orthodontics. Okay, so you should have three new pages. And you guys should trade off. So if you do a page, Deanna, then Ernie should do a page. And you should do a page. Okay, well. Okay, well. Yeah, so we need to trade off. Now, who's your partner, Theo? Oh, good. All right. Okay, so you have three pages. But the pages are at the bottom. Okay, so now the next thing you need to do is move the page up to the top. Okay. 
How do we do that? Okay. Okay, this is what your thing should look like. Look at my screen. I now move that new page called new client. I dragged it up to the top underneath last name. Okay. So Ernie, Deanna, are you there? You move the page that's called new client up to right below where it says last name. So you hold down the left mouse button and you just drag it up. It might take a little bit of practice to do that. So it should say first name, last name, new client. Well, okay, so if you have one box that says first and last name, you have a mistake. You need to add in another box that has last name. Because the day before, we made it clear you need to have a, box, a question that says first name and one that says last name. Okay, so Marty, are you there? Yeah. Okay, good. Stephanie, are you here? Okay, good. Ernie, Deanna, are you still trying to drag it up? Okay, now, the next thing I want everybody to do is under where it says last name, you're going to add a new box. So you click on the arrow, and we want to add in, I think it's multiple choice. So click multiple choice. And a box opens up. And the title of this is, are you a what? Are you a new client? Then we check the box next to go to page based on answer. Question number one is yes. The answer is yes. And it says, go to page two. Go to the new client page. If you say no, continue to I'm saying I have to reload this file. Just do it. It could mean a lot of things. If you need to reload it, just do it. Okay, and then you say it. You hit done. Now, if you've been following, what is on your new client page? So it should be address, city, state, zip. Right? Phone number, email address. Do you have insurance coverage? All of the questions that you have that you would ask somebody if they're a new client. So they should automatically be on that page because we inserted a page above those questions. So it looked like first, last, and then we put in a new page. That was address, city, state, zip, insurance, any other question that you ask the people the first time. How did we get all that on that, on that big client page? It should already be there. All that's on mine that says, are you a new client? And says, yes, that's a point of well, but you should have put the new client, dropped the new client page up to the top. Didn't you, on your form, didn't you ask people for their address? Up to right below where it says first name. 
then address city state zip would have been the next thing. But clearly, neither of you guys were listening the day before where I said, do not make one box for the address city state zip because you can't sort. All you're going to be able to do is sort on the on the street number. Okay, people, what you need to tell yourself is this is easy. Don't be saying this is hard, it's frustrating. Say it's easy, I just don't have it yet. Page two is called. Page two is called. Yeah, new client. And there, what should be there is address, city, state, zip. So, Ernie and Deanna start adding these other boxes. Take your address box and change it. And then add in a box for city, a box for state, a box for zip, phone number, email, and all these boxes. Insurance. That should be insurance should be on, on that.
Okay, so Dwayne, yes. look at your form in live view. So let me, everybody, let me have your attention just for a second, please. Okay, so this is Dwayne and Phyllis's form that I've been working on to add these new pages in. So you walk in, they give you a tablet. You guys aren't paying attention to me. Deanna, if you don't pay attention to me, you're not going to be able to catch up. Okay. So this is how the form should look. If you don't know where you're heading, any path is going to take you there. You're not going to get it right. So the first page, somebody hands you the tablet. What's the question? First name, last name, are you a new client? How's that? If you got that form, would you feel, oh, this is easy? Yeah, because it's simple, right? And they did a thing that they made to make you fill in information on people. Are you a new client? Yes. Then what do you do? Continue. Okay, now where does it go? It goes to new client form. So, now here's a thing to learn. You don't need to have, must answer all of these unless they really have to answer them. So here, so what I generally do is, I say if you start answering a question, like if you start putting in your address, you're going to do city, state, zip. So they wanted to make it very clear you can't just put in your street. You have to fill in these other boxes. So that's okay, too. Okay. Zip. Phone number. Email address. Do you currently have insurance information? Yes, no. Now, this would be a thing for another page. That if you get, yes, I have insurance, it should take you to another page. that says put in your insurance information, right? Okay, when is the last time you visited the dentist? Okay, now I'm going to continue. So now it comes to a page that says today's visit. Okay, you notice it's not this big long list of questions like we're usually used to on a clipboard. This is just a few questions you submit. You go to a new page, submit. Are you in pain today? Okay, I don't have to answer that question. How much pain are you in? So here's a good question on scale of one to five. I mean, a lot of things. Other services. Now, here's the other two pages that we added. Okay. Are you interested in more information on dental hygiene? Which I misspelled. Yes. If I hit continue, it goes to a dental hygiene page where I could ask questions. I'll hit back. Are you interested in orthodontic information? I'm going to say yes. And it takes me to the orthodontics page. I don't have anything on it right now. Or I say, no thanks, I'm not interested in either of those. I hit continue, and it submits the form. Boom, done. Okay? This is where it's going, so now I can submit another form. So they turn the dot, they turn the tablet in, they keep it sitting there. Somebody, a new patient walks in, new client walks in, they push to submit another form and they hand this to the next person that walks in. They fill out their first name, their last name. Are you a new client? No, I'm not a new client. Where should it take me? Should take me to page three, today's visit. So I didn't have to answer what is your address, city, state, zip, the kind of stuff that's on the clipboard that we always have to answer. Okay, and it just asks the two questions, are you in pain? Are you interested in other services? No. Continue. Submit. Done. Now let's go back to the form. I want to see the, the spreadsheet. How do I see the spreadsheet? How do I get to the spreadsheet? Anybody? View response. View response. Should there be any responses? No. Yeah. 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 How many? One? Well, two. There should be two because I just did it. Okay, 
this one. I don't have permission. So let's. So you have to go to the spreadsheet and give me permission on that. I've so I just asked for permission. I've been to doctors' offices where they're using this technology. Yeah. This, uh, okay. this computer technology. Right. Okay. Yeah. So Dave has been to somewhere that'll give you this. What I'm saying is, one day all of them you know, are going to do that. Yeah. If you know how to create a form, you have value. What happens if it's a you want to do? Uh, Robert's business, car cleaning. Could you use a form like this for that? Yeah, yeah. yeah, same exact form. What's your first name, last name? Are you a new client? What's your address, city, state, zip? Then you might have a page on what? What kind of car? What year, make, model, et cetera? Okay, so, okay, so here I am. Now I'm going to view responses. Let's see if I have permission yet. So now I have permission, and here's the two things that I just did. That, my fellow learning people, seekers of power, that is power. That is power because we have knowledge. It's the that we have knowledge. We captured information on people. And the more information we capture, what the more power we have. Now, why did I have a, a, a page that says dental hygiene? Are you interested in information on dental hygiene? So, so you can always go back to it. If they say, yeah, I can ask them questions of, well, what toothpaste do you use? How often you brush it? I can get more information on what they do because maybe when they come in for the visit, I'm going to say, okay, I saw your interest in dental hygiene. We can add this kit here, special toothbrush, mouthwash, toothpaste. Here's what you should be using. Yeah, dental floss or those little picks. Here's what I can do. And if there's a way I can add it onto the insurance, I will. Or maybe now I can get the Crest rep to come in and give me free samples because I'll have a question on there. Is it okay if we pass this information on to dental hygiene professionals. Everybody's going to say yes, right? Or if we think they're not going to say yes, we say what? Unless you check the box, we're going to give this information to other people, right? Okay. So then we say to the Crest Rep, hey, I've got a deal. You give me samples that I can give to people who want this thing. And I'll give them a little kit, a dental hygiene kit. And I'll give you, Mr. Crest Rep, their email address, their name and email address. So you, Mr. Dental, you, Mr. Crest Sales Rep, you can now turn this into Crest and say, you know what I'm doing, Crest? I'm gathering information on people who are going to the dentist that we're giving dental supply kits to. Wouldn't it be good marketing department if we sent these people a thank you for trying our products. Yeah. That's what the dental rep says to his boss. Mm -hmm. I've got this dental office here that's going to give me 50 names of people a week. And I go to 10 different dental offices. I go to 50 different dental offices. They're each going to give me 10 names, 50 names a week. That's 10 a day. That's not a big deal. So what's 50 times 50? What's 5 times 5? 25, 25 with two zeros. 2,500, 50 times 50. 2,500, would that sales guy get a pat on the back if he was able to get a crest? 2,500 emails a week of people that were new, guys getting a crest kit? Okay, now could we do the same thing with car waxing and washing? You go, Robert goes to the rep that sells the car care, you know, the, the, the wax or the soap or whatever. He says, I don't want to buy this stuff in Costco anymore. I want to buy it direct from you. Here's why you should give it to me. And I also need samples because I want to give these guys a little tube of something. I want to give them a little tchotchke. I want to give them something, a little gift. You give me these gifts. I'll give you their email addresses. So you can follow up with an email to these guys and maybe you give them a coupon 
for Walmart. Because Walmart sells this. He's getting me an email address of one client per hour. I've got a thousand reps out there around the country. If they could be getting me one name per minute, I'll be getting a thousand names per minute. How's that? Would the marketing guy be happy? That's 60,000 names an hour. I mean, time of six. <laughs> that form can be applied to anything. We said, could it be applied to Robert doing cars? Yeah. yeah. Could it be applied to people going to a restaurant, like making reservations? Uh, okay, what else? What other business? Home improvement? Uh, car care? Other kind of car care? Uh, let's see. What business were you in before, Arnie? <laughs> Telemarketing, remember? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, telemarketing is a little different because you're on the phone with the guy. Marty could fill it in, or I mean, Ernie could fill it in. So it could work for that, right? What business have you been in? Sales. Sales. Well, it works for any type of sales business if you can get people to go online to fill out a form. Can the form be put on this? Yeah. yeah. You don't need to have it on a tablet can be on this. So it could be client walks into the office and says, I'm here to check in. And the receptionist says, oh, what's your email address? Or what's your phone number? Like if you go to the DMV now, what do they say? What's your phone number? So you go to the DMV, you go to the dentist office, they say, okay, uh, I'm here for an appointment at 10 o'clock. Okay, great, what's your name? Okay, Mike, okay, Mike, great. Mike, what's your phone number? Because I'm gonna send you, uh, Instead of, we don't do clipboards anymore. I'm going to send you a thing that you can do on your phone. What do you give them? So what do they now have? They have, they can text you at any time. They don't need to call you next time and say, oh, you have an appointment tomorrow? I hate that. Okay, but I hate it when I get a call. So my doctor will call and say, you have an appointment tomorrow. I'd rather get a text. Okay, because it's easier. So you get okay, great, Mike, good. Okay, I'm gonna send we don't do clipboards anymore. You notice how I say it like that. We don't do clipboards anymore. I don't say we don't do clipboards anymore. I put it we don't do clipboards anymore. I have it putting down with my hand that means bad, right? Okay, we don't do that anymore. So what's your and you're just gonna give it to me, right? Why? Because what did we learn from Seth Godin? People want to be led. Yeah. Okay. You're there. You're now in the dentist tribe. You go in to have dental work done. You're a follower. They tell you to do something. You do it. Okay. You're not like that girl in uh, where was it? Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia. Yesterday on the news. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Why did she get snapped out? Snatched out of the desk? She refused to get out of her desk. No, the police. School police. Because she refused. You can't, you know, at a certain point, a school has to say, we can't tolerate that, right? Because then every student gets to do it. How can you teach if every student says, no, I'm not going to get off the phone and I'm not going to leave my desk? What are they supposed to do? Stop the whole class? Wow. Yeah. How? How are they supposed to do it? Well, that's the point. There is They did. The police was the third person that asked her to do it. First, it was a teacher, then an administrator, and she was, no, I'm not going to do it. You can't beat me. She refused. Now, what happened to everybody else in the class? Everybody else has to suffer. But no, I'm saying, let's say not other kids want to use their phone. Let's say the kids that wanted to learn. Okay, what would we do here if Rachel said, screw you, I'm going to do what I want? 
No, she said that we would have to say you have to leave right now. We get the ability to say I'm just going to call Lieutenant Scallet, and we have a lot more teeth in that one, right? Because that's like you go. Here's your choice: you you leave, or you go. You get on a bus. Yeah, that's right. So that's power. But a school has nothing left other than the school police. And so the whole class has to suffer because one girl says no, because then now you have a rule set. That's right. Now everybody gets to do that. Everybody gets to do whatever they want. And we have to wait for the parents to show up. They do need to do something different, like here's your choice. You either get out of your chair and do what you're supposed to do, or when class is over and you do leave, you're not in this school. And if you show up here tomorrow, we're calling the police to have you arrested for trespassing because you don't go to school here anymore. You get to go to the reform school. And how you get there, that's your parents' problem. They have a right to do that. Your parents have to get you there. And you know what? If you don't show up, your parents can be arrested for contrib contributing to truancy. Yes. So life gets all bad. So you can choose the easy way, young lady, or the hard way. But you don't get to say, we have to change how we run our school because you don't want to get off your phone. So, Dwayne, I agree. That's how they could handle it. Yeah. We're going to ignore you right now, but here's your choice, young lady. When this class is over, the police are going to be here and escort you off campus. And if you come back, you will be arrested. And, and I know people who had a situation where the kids were like playing with matches. That's a big deal here. Playing with matches at a school in Nevada is arson. Okay, it's not a kid's little thing. You got a little lighter. Hey, look what I found. The school can say, police come arrest this guy arson. But what they'll do is say, you don't get to come to school here anymore. And you sign this piece of paper or you refuse to sign it and we'll just write she refused to sign, saying she doesn't go to school here anymore. And now you need to report to the county school board office, and they're going to put you in the other school. And you really don't want to go to the other school if you want to learn. Because who's in the other school? All the other people who say, I'm going to be on my phone, I'm not going to do anything. And so that, I agree with you, Dwayne. That's how they should handle it. We're not going to disrupt the class. Here's where you go. But you know why they don't do that? That girl is money for the school. Every day she shows up, that school gets paid. So if they transfer her to the other school, they get paid. The other school gets paid and they don't. So they don't. So schools don't say, hey, let's get rid of all the troublemakers. They don't say that. Because what? <laughs> yeah, okay. So it's break time. We've gone way over. We'll come back at 10 after. That was civics right there, 101.